And I'm glad that we're sharing this because if you're hearing this and this is kind of resonating with you, like pay attention to the patterns of how people people you talk to, how they make you feel. Like, do you feel like they are emotionally dumping everything on you? Are you allowed to talk back or do they get defensive? It's a big red flag of a of emotionally toxic person. But with what works for you and start filling yourself up with all those good things, whatever it's, you need those words of affirmation or putting yourself in environments that fill you up or sitting in nature like you, whatever is now adding to you, instead of focusing your energy where you're hemorrhaging, shift it in places that are nurturing and nourishing for you so it's good yeah. to be aware of your emotional stress man i'm telling you the healing journey is always going <laughs> ongoing and there's never like a destination healing graves holistically there's not much out there at all we're kind of in this unknown territory so we're inviting you guys into our personal journey we may not know all the answers but guess what we're going to try to figure it out as much as we can my name is meron and i'm based in the uk and i'm the founder of loving me kindly and my name is priscilla and i'm based in the united states and i am the founder of healing unapologetically together we are co-hosting our podcast thyroid sisters navigate graves disease over the last few years, since being diagnosed with Graves' disease, we have fought to gain our lives back and are both living medication-free. We are not medical experts. However, through our experience of dealing with this disease, we have learned so much and want to share our journey of healing and self-discovery. We have come to realize that trusting our instincts and intuition has helped us lead healthier lives. And our goal with these podcasts is to empower and inspire you Welcome back. We're doing um, emotional stressors part two, I guess. Um, I'm not sure what we're calling it, but I'm just kind of going off of what, what our conversation has been so far. Um, in our first podcast, we had mentioned uh, creating a list of emotional def defense mechanisms that we created or like developed in childhood and um, how those defense mechanisms are affecting us now and affecting us not just in our day-to-day -day life, but in our immune health and our autoimmune um, illness as well. So the first, should we do a quick recap? Just like yeah. the first two that I mentioned was fear of speaking up, suppressing my emotions, and that I don't like to feel like I'm a burden to people. And then you want to mention the first two and then lead with your yeah. third. So I said I was going to not say my first one until the last bit. So I'll keep that yeah. in this, this podcast because I feel like that comes at the crux of everybody's emotional um, profile. We'll see. I feel like this is one of, this is what, what is like the underlying issue. I think mm -hmm. is my number one issue. So I'll, I'll say Every that. Time you like, like, you, you, I feel like you're building really good momentum because I'm just like, mm, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious. I'm just curious if this is the root of it. So I'll keep that till the end. But my next, the ones I said was I never prioritize my own needs and I don't speak up. And my other one was that I had high levels of guilt. So I don't like um, burdening other people. So again, it's about not give, not mm. speaking up. And also we sort of, sort of mentioned that there was this, uh, we put, um, being sick kind of gave us this attention a little bit but anyway you'd, you'd have to listen to the part one to understand what we mean by that um mm -hmm. that comes into the guilt thing i think so my next yeah. one, my next one now for this podcast would be um that i wrote was i give up easily and i think that comes from i'm reading it here so i think that mm -hmm. comes from not believing that you deserve anything good so that's an interesting one. What do I mean by that? For instance, I never stick at any, I, I had as a child, I, I would quit things so easily, so quickly. Mm -hmm. So that could mean, let's say, it, you know, that having a habit of eating healthy all the time is good for you all the time. You need to do it. Um, or exercising is good for you and committing. I found it so hard to commit to, to things and I could easily give up on stuff. Um, and I feel like it comes from a lack of like thinking that you deserve anything good because you just give up on yourself. You're not even deserving of um, sticking to something. I, I don't know. Like, like so improving or like something yeah. new or. Yeah. You just have this lack of like, mm. it doesn't matter attitude because 
like mm-hmm. almost like you don't you don't really matter for something to um for you to stick to something I don't know if you if you've ever had that where you just don't commit uh, I it's I do have that same behavior pattern like especially mm-hmm. as a child like um maybe the the root reason could have been different it was almost like I didn't want to give up but I almost felt like a lot of times I had to just because either there was a lack of support mm. and stuff like that um but um that made me a big procrastinator as well mm-hmm. uh-huh. so kind of led to like giving up at the same time procrastinating to start on things um yeah. those are definitely things because if you have a good sense if you have a strong sense of self no matter what you will commit to things because you know you deserve you know whether it's to have that body or to have that health to have that lifestyle to um look after yourself when you have a strong sense of self you will commit to it because you know that this is what your body your mind and body deserve Mm -hmm. um if you don't have that then you easily just give up on yourself so you're Mm -hmm. not um it's quite linked to the other ones that we mentioned where you're not really advocating for yourself it's just so easy yeah. to give up on you maybe because yeah. you felt given up on as a child it could be any mm-hmm. reason mm-hmm. so you give up on yourself so then you're not really looking after yourself it still adds to that thing of not looking after yourself that's what i yeah. think that made, i feel like when you said that it's making me reflect a lot yeah. childhood <laughs> because- coming up <laughs> yes, I feel like I'm, I related to it so much too, because I feel like if I think back, I'm, I'm, I can't think of one thing that I, I mean, I was in band mm. and I did that for a couple of years and then I gave up. Um, it was something I enjoyed. I just feel like mm. I didn't have, maybe I'm looking at it though. I, I'm just trying to look at like habit building things mm. that I've that I would give up as a child. And then I can see how that uh, continued into like my teens and then young adult. But then I just, in general, I would procrastinate so much. Like that was your thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's almost like not starting at all rather than starting and then giving up. You just didn't start at all. I kind of felt like, um, and I've learned, I've, this is one thing that I've maybe becoming a mom has kind of taught me. Like, I always felt like things had to look a certain way for it to be um, perfect. Deserving. Yeah. Deserving. Or, or, you see? Yeah. It's yeah. that. Exactly. So if I couldn't get to that, that, mm. how I think it needed to look, I'm just like thinking here in real time. <laughs> So, made you think that's why this is so important it's so it's so yeah. interesting we're helping I definitely am on the spectrum on that on mm-hmm. that you know um it's you so, know yeah. being healthy and good health and a good mindset and a good um, healthy body comes with consistent action if you yes. aren't good at being consistent and you so easily give up on yourself then there's mm-hmm. no way you're going to formulate a good habits Mm-hmm. Stick to. so hence why it's mm-hmm. so hard for me now to do those good habits like I am learning forming yeah. habits I'm learning that I need to be consistent like I'm learning you I have I have to be militant with not having gluten processed food sugars mm-hmm. any just just if I you know the habit could be that oh well I've done I've cut out gluten I've cut out sugars but maybe I can have a little bit of processed food here and there no it doesn't work like that you have mm-hmm. to have consistent action for you mm-hmm. to have this healing mm-hmm. right so um, oh yeah it's been such a steep learning curve to implement and be consistent with the actions because I'm mm-hmm. not I wasn't used to doing that at all so easy for me to give up be like average in school not really try so hard again that whole thing of just not feeling like I, I mattered so um or it mattered or it mattered really yeah. when yeah. I write something or didn't do something but then guess what it does because your body's listening yeah. to you so that's yeah. why I put that maybe I wonder if other people also can relate to that uh, I think a lot of people are I think that 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 is something that I like I was sharing I think we all sh- we're all are on the spectrum but mm. um some degree but 
Yeah, I felt like mine was more conditioned, though. Right. I don't know if that makes sense. It could have been, but I'm just still so over time. Though, but you're doing you... the same thing, so you're conditioned to just procrastinate yeah. because that's what you're used yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah, over time, I think it becomes a conditioning, and you have to break those bad habits. That's what we're trying to. Yes, do. Yeah, procrastinating was a bad habit. You know, I guess it's like now you have you have a baby, right? You ha- you consistently have to do the right thing by your baby. You can't one day just neglect, neglect your baby. It's because no. you're trying to look after this 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 being. It has to, and you love this being so much. You consistently mm-hmm. try to do the right thing um all the time i can imagine i don't have a child i can imagine that's what it's like because yeah you love you wouldn't one day just be like nah i don't feel like it right or yeah i I mean i i don't relate to that at all yeah with the baby because you have yeah Uh, it's something that you love so much so then if you loved yourself so much and you had that mm -hmm. strong sense of self then you would consistently do the right thing by yourself by that's free that's like self-preservation mm-hmm. you have all those other habits consistently and then maybe the yeah, body so out of that. because that like sense. yeah it's funny because we were just talking about how rylan wants to eat everything i want to eat yeah so it's making me like be more mindful on what what is he seeing me eat you know yeah, so yeah, not because i want it like not because I, i'm so doing it for myself but because of the example, I don't want him to to eat foods that aren't, you know, if I want a treat, I don't want him to think that is normal because he's too little to understand what a treat is. You know, he's just yeah. like, he doesn't need it at the moment. Yeah. He he's, if he, if he gets exposed to something yummy, he's just going to want that or like yummy, I shouldn't say yummy, but something <laughs> that, that would be considered like a treat that isn't, isn't like nutritious, you know, like let's say chocolate or something, which I'm not a big chocolate eater. I'm just trying to give an example here. Yeah. Um, I don't want to introduce that to him. He's just too, he doesn't understand the concept yeah. of a little bit, you know, or um, just kind of like with TV, it's like, whatever, it's like little kids have a hard time grasping that. So I'm, I'm being extra careful, not because of me, but because of him, but you're right. You kind of need to look at yourself. Like if you're going to give that extra care to someone else, why can't you give that same extra care for yourself? Right. Yeah. Don't That's kind of what I'm feeling up yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, like it's worth making sure that you're eating nutritious, that you're getting good sleep. Like, if, like that's what I make sure and prioritize every day for my baby. You know, um, of course, like it's almost like you don't, there's nobody else doing that for you. So it's hard to do that for yourself. Yeah, like, do you know what? It's making me now say my, the, the one that I, I, that was on my number one because it kind of links to it. I wonder if I should say that now. Let me see what else I had on my list um hmm. no I'll wait I'll wait till I say my iPad <laughs> <laughs> but that's a good yeah well, I'll share other people relate what's your other one I'll share my what other one? one um that's your number four okay so I, my number four well what? actually I, I skipped over my number two because I think I was just like going with the conversation my number two was never saying no to people I was always like a, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Always available. Even when I wasn't. Right. I would would hardly say no to people. Yeah. So just putting on healthy boundaries, like this doesn't work for me. No, thank you. You know, or I can't do that. Or, um, yeah, I was always like the go-to person in my family too. So, uh, if anybody needed something, I was always like the person to go to and ask for help. Or because you taught people that without realizing it, you taught people that you didn't have any boundaries. Because I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say no. I would yeah. just be like, so is we say yes, easy. yeah, yeah. And that kind of leads to my last one, which I'm just going to throw out there mm. um, to wrap up my part really quick. But I would be too nice, even to the point of being used by people. Oh yes, 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 yes. Um, yeah. And that kind of goes with the never saying no to people, oh, which is why I wanted to piggyback on those two. Um, so I remember my sister, my, not my, my oldest sister, but the sister, my middle sister. Um, she, she would always tell me that, are you too nice? <laughs> you know, like you shouldn't, you know? Um, mm. So I think they kind of go together, but I, I just, mm. I don't know what, 
emotional. I mean, I just think that those were things that I I had to learn in the moment. Um, I, I'm thinking like childhood when I'm talking, like I'm talking about things I had to struggle with in the home and outside the home. Cause I felt like, um, um, you know, we had our own like family struggles, but there's also struggles mm-hmm. with my peers. And I feel like with my peers, definitely the, the saying no and being too nice was something that I had to learn quickly. Otherwise I was going to get burned really quickly by, by it, you know, like you were going to deal with a lot of consequences. Mm-hmm. Um, so at what yeah, age so did you realize, what age did you realize that this whole thing of saying yes to everybody was detrimental to you and that you had to change it? What age would you have been? Um, maybe 14 or 15. That's pretty Because good. I, yeah, cool. I think that, um, that, that kind of opened the door, I think, to... I feel like my emotional health has been something that I've always been continually working on. Um, but the peers, like dealing with my peers was definitely like the, 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 the gateway to it. You know? Yeah. 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 Because I felt like um, there's a lot of potential consequences coming and it was something that I really had to like tackle mm-hmm. head on. Cause you're either going to go with the flow or you're not. And I learned really quickly, like I am not someone that goes with the flow. Like I have, I can, you know, but sometimes like it takes, you don't, go with the flow. you don't like going with the flow. What do you mean by that? Like I, I'm not um, like when it comes to a peers setting, like I'm not mm-hmm. just going to check. Like I'm comfortable with, um, with hanging out with everybody and being friends and, you know, but when there's things that are potentially being introduced that can be harmful or I feel uncomfortable, like that's when I can say no. Like that's when I've learned when, when the situation kind of like my Graves disease, when you're dealing with a very extreme, like Mm -hmm. uncomfortable uh, situation, like that's when I've learned to speak up because there's going to be this, this very Mm -hmm. severe consequence coming. But I also realized that it's not healthy to wait till like uh, uh, you're seeing the red alarm going off to like stand up for yourself and speak up and to say, Hey, I'm not going to, I'm not just going to follow along um, with what you're saying, with what you want to do or, or uh, it's such an extreme uh, consequence at the end of that. And you but know, it's that. Such a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's also very, it's very extreme too to my personality because I would always mm-hmm. be so easygoing. I would be very nice. I would say, I would, I wouldn't be like a, mm. a, a no percent. And then I would find myself in these moments and be like, no, you know, like, I like <laughs> this is where my line, yeah, my line stops. But, um, that's good. I think, yeah, I think it's good, but I can see that, that, that causes a lot of, um, unnecessary affliction as well, because you're, you're all, you're ignoring the signs where you need to be saying no, no to people instead of yes. Had so, you said it from the beginning, it would save you from having to press the emergency button later on. And then people go, where did that come from? Is it like that? Yeah, because then you deal with a backlash. Yeah. Because people retaliate because they're like, yeah. oh, you were this type of person. You know, they, yeah. th- that's when I realized that um, that's when I learned at a young age that people mistake kindness for weakness. Oh, yeah. All the time. So that, when I because I always saw me as being nice as like something that that's just who I am but I yeah. never realized that people were seeing it as weakness or they yeah. were thinking it's something they can take advantage of and I realized that like um I had to protect that you know I ha- you you give it to people that that appreciate it not just like that's what I was going to say. I think the wrong type of people will see it as a weakness, but the right type of people see it as a strength and they appreciate that about you. And they're great. They, they, yeah, they just absolutely appreciate the fact that you're kind and they'll celebrate that. But the wrong type of people will take advantage of it because it's so easy to change. You'd be like, Do you know what? I don't want to be a nice person anymore because it doesn't seem to work. It's not working for me. People are just yeah. getting hurt by this. But then, and I hear my friends saying it, I've been through it myself, but then why should I have to change what is so natural to me 
because of other people's way of um seeing it that's not fair so yeah that's where it comes the boundaries come in learning your boundaries so that you yeah. can still be you um and be all the amazing magical things that you are um and protect it so, or, so that other people can't just come in and sabotage that because that's not fair yeah change who you are yeah it, I, I, I feel like, um, you know, like some people's childhood trauma can be bully, but being bullying too. Like I was never bullied, mm-hmm. but I felt like I was always kind of in the outskirt of my friend groups. Like I, I was there, but you know, I was just kind of like more in the out, outskirt. And I don't know if it was just like the, my emotional walls that I've had up. I was very reserved, quiet. I was shy. You know, again, we're talking about, I didn't like to speak up and I never want a cause like mousy. I just wanted to have fun and play, and you know, stuff like that. But, um, I, yeah, it's just that I feel like also kind of affected, um, how do you want to say it? like it, it did contribute to my childhood because I think I had um I had like a group of childhood friends that I grew up with so it, it wasn't just the family but the outside world as well you know right. that I was dealing with yeah so it was like where did you absolutely feel safe where did you feel like completely safe yeah you know what's funny I think that like, it's like that you're just saying that because for me, feeling safe was just being outside. I love just being outdoors. Me too. It was just like, and I think that's why friends, like I was so willing to just have this friend group because it was just right there. Um, I But I just needed to be outside. Like that was my safe place. And um, oftentimes like um, I would just like lay out in the backyard and just like look at the sky. I would just, I would find ways to just be outside. But um, nature was your safety. <laughs> yeah, because nature is yeah, constant. That, you know what to expect of nature. Nature is just nature. Yeah. Mm. It just um, like I really did when I was diagnosed with Graves. I really did like analyze when did I feel my best, my healthiest, and when was I feeling mm. my worst. Mm. And I realized that as a kid, that's when I was kind of sharing earlier like I never got sick but I realized I was predominantly outside all the time I'm talking about like Mm -hmm. from morning till like you know late afternoon and I don't know if times have changed so much and I know I was at the west coast so I had the beach there's a lot of things to do but um good weather all the time so it's just that's where I was were you by yourself would you be playing with others though you know it be- um sometimes I'll be playing with like my sister or um friends yeah but then when when um I noticed that when I started to lose that friend group I was losing more of that outdoor time you know that yeah spending that so time it made outdoors. you go more in it made you become more rec- um is it called a recluse yeah you recluse became or like an intro uh-huh intro- you became introverted a very, a little bit of an intro- very young yeah. age yeah age to be impacted by a friendship whatever yeah issues because I've got it uh, impacted by it in my late my 30s um -hmm. I never had issues before so and I find it very hard so I can only imagine Mm -hmm. it when you're at that developing age to go through it Mm -hmm. that must really change your identity almost in a way that must cause like issues with your identity it just I think I just became self reliant like this that's when you became self reliant right? and I kind of felt like though like I like to bring in a little bit of, of my background too like my dad was very big on that like of being self sufficient self reliant mm-hmm. like he thought that that was the best way he could protect his daughters because he had three girls and you know there's only one boy in my family and I think for my dad that was very overwhelming like because I remember him at one point saying like how can I be there for all three of you guys out in the world so I think this, right his concept wasn't like oh you're my little princess his concept was like you're gonna be my warrior princess and you're gonna have to learn to kick ass because I can't deal I can't I can't like be there all the time for you so my dad definitely had mm-hmm. that like you know you have to be self-reliant and and a little yeah, bit of I'm like weird that the way suppressing of the emotions were kind of taught because he felt like you know, emotions weren't going to solve anything. And so 
I, I can see remnants of my emotional defense mechanism coming from my upbringing mm-hmm. and even with the choices that I made um, with like my friend group. But um, yeah, it did. It, it, luckily, I had sisters. So I felt like a lot of my uh, that peer interaction or like friend talking and all that kind of stuff I was getting from my sisters anyways. But it's still, I think, a big part of my childhood emotional makeup. If we're like discussing I, here, I, I do yeah. think that you, even as an adult, you have to look at the people you're interacting with, your peers, to see how they're affecting you emotionally. Um, you Absolutely. know, because people, and I, you hear that a lot of times, people can be very draining, very toxic. You know, they come and dump a lot of their their burdens on you. And um, yeah. not everybody, but those are the toxic yeah. individuals, you know, they just kind of like, well, if you're really nice and you have no boundaries and there's no door and people just walk in <laughs> into your zone, then they're going to just come in and just do whatever they want to do because you haven't put any rules up. So you're an and easy you're, target for those. Yes. People. Yeah. Well, I do think there's a certain type. I do think I not everybody is like that. I no. do think, though, there are like, I don't want to use, I don't know. I don't know if predator is the right word or like there are <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> There are people who love that. They love being the center of attention. They love that you're quiet. They love that you're just nice. That you don't really speak up and talk back. Give them pushback. Yeah. And they just, and they can go off and they can like make themselves the center of your inner universe. And they want that and expect that all the time. You're just Um, the audience. mm -hmm. You're the audience. Exactly. That's exactly. And I do think that I, because I saw an, an extension of that, Mm-hmm. growing up um you know I was more aware of it I mean yeah when I was a kid I was just more aware of it growing up but yeah mm-hmm. definitely your emotional oh, health gets good. impacted not just from like family but from peers and you know even work environment and stuff like that it's just important that's why I wanted to throw that out there because it, it's not just like uh, at home but it's externally as well but you know what that made me think so if you're not being asked those questions like oh what do you think and how did this make you feel and what's your how was how was school I don't know Um, or how are you doing (laughs) how are you if you're not asked those growing up and you're just listening to others then you you don't because you haven't even used your voice you're not using it enough it just closes up you don't even know how to use it and express yourself mm-hmm. um and if so you if you're around those dominant personalities where they do the talking and you just feel like you're just one big ear <laughs> just like not even a body yeah, yeah. just an ear yeah. then um yeah it's like feeling like a you don't it doesn't matter what you well what, i also felt oh. like i thought that that was my I almost thought that that was my role. And I realized what being an ear, like, mm-hmm. yeah, I almost Me thought that, that was just, yeah. Me too. And it's, it's Me too. That I think so it's a true. sign of being conditioned by like you describe these dominant personalities or, yeah. or individuals who like to be the center, who just need you need an audience. Yes. That's conditioned. I think from people like that. Yeah. So, but you almost think that's your role. Like I'm just here to listen. Like, and you honestly don't even think about talking about yourself or sharing. You don't even realize that needs to be a two way relationship. You know, you're just like, Oh yeah. You know, listening along. When people would rarely ask me at school, you know, like on a Monday, they'd be like, so how was your weekend? I would panic. It's like, Oh my God, what's the question? Uh, I don't remember it. My answer would always be, Oh, I don't really remember it. So um, it got me out of like expressing myself because I wasn't I wasn't used to people asking me about me. Mm. Well, that would throw me off such a basic question because that's what people mm. would talk about, in school, right? Oh, I did yeah. this one week and I did that. Yeah. And the rare times people would ask me, I'd be put on the spot, and it's just like panic. Mm. And because of that panic, I would almost even literally delete whatever happened on the weekend because I didn't want to talk about it. Or yeah, it was just oh, I don't remember all the time. That was my answer. Yeah. Yeah. That's not normal, really. No. Basic thing. And I'm glad that we're sharing this because if you're hearing this and this is kind of resonating with you, mm-hmm. like pay attention to the patterns of how people people you talk to, how they make you feel. Like, do you feel like they are emotionally dumping everything on you? Are you allowed to talk back or do they get defensive if you're 
sharing or, or you know what I mean? Like yeah. there are a lot of individuals that want to just be the center of attention all the time. And those are very toxic individuals. And when they don't even care to know how you're doing or care to ask to see how you're doing, but they're willing to come and tell you their whole story. I think that's a big red flag of a a emotionally toxic person. (laughs) Absolutely. So then you just think that it's okay for people to dump on you and then you never express yourself and you never also check in with yourself because you've Mm -hmm. never learned that behavior of checking in. What do Mm -hmm. do you care about? Yes. You know, any of these questions have never been asked to you. So you don't ask it of yourself. So you're Mm -hmm. just like, it's almost like a bomb waiting to explode in a way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. It's just so too many unhealthy um, habits. Some every like children are different. Some kids don't need that much attention, but some kids already have like quietness to them or a sensitivity. Mm -hmm them so you have to be like extra mindful of what does this mm-hmm. actually need for their growth that's best for their mm-hmm. growth if you don't have that then you've kind of just gotten and lost and you forget yourself that you grow up just that is so true mm-hmm. if you are a parent listening to this that is 1000 mm-hmm. percent true because i came from um a family of four right there's four of us mm-hmm. siblings and um, each of our needs and uh, and love languages, whatever you want to describe it, it's mm-hmm. very very different. But I oftentimes I understand now as my mom, a mom myself, mm-hmm. how you know work and just like household and all these other things can kind of get in the way. But you do need to take the time. And I only have one kid, but you do, you do need to take the time to connect with your child. And if you have multiple, to connect with each one according to their needs. Just because one child isn't speaking up as much does not mean that they don't need one-on-one time or quality time. Um, Because I definitely kind of experienced that growing up. Like I felt like I had other siblings that um, maybe needed more on that one-on-one. So, you know, because we weren't, I wasn't a big complainer. It was just like, oh, you're good. (laughs) You know what I mean? You're good. Yeah. Yeah. Worst thing to teach people about you that so that people always think that you're okay. It's really, so you're suffering in silence. You're just suffering in silence for a long period of time. Or sometimes you think think that you're you're okay when you're not, you know, because you're you're right. You're suffering in silence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gosh, it's really like impacting my heart because sometimes you think you're the only one that's gone through these things. And these are really deep things that we're talking about that I've never really Mm -hmm. spoken about with other people um, on this level. So to hear somebody about the same illness or had had basic autoimmune disease have like similar patterns as a child, these intricate things of feeling like an ear, you never say that out loud with your friends because it's it's not you don't think that's a thing but because we're talking about it it's like oh my god do you also feel that way mm-hmm. it's yeah oh it's really like really that's what wow. I love our podcast because I feel like um oh sorry like just to relate like to your other point you just made like I do feel my stomach in knots right now because I do feel like I'm saying things that I haven't said out loud like the mm-hmm. You're like you know, like some of the stuff that I shared at first was kind of easy to to get through, but I don't know why that saying the other stuff about how my peers even impacted me um, was like creating little knots in my in my stomach. Um, but these things are just like, yeah, that's why I love our podcast because we want to create this space to talk about these a safe space to talk about these things without feeling prejudged like Maren and I literally come up with our ideas just from our conversations we're having just from two individuals who are just like going through life going through our health journey and then you know like like we're sharing like our emotional health and then we're realizing like how many other people are out here who feel similar but they felt like us like they weren't allowed or didn't have like a place to kind of share these things um and they don't realize how normal it is and or the how there could be a connection and that's literally why we're doing these podcasts is just kind of to create the space that we can have this conversation yeah because i've never um i feel like the emotional 
aspect to topic, like the emotional topic of, or the topic of emotional health is just kind of starting to be a little more recognized in the social media. Yeah. I don't know if you agree to that or not, but I feel like the mental health topic has become so huge. I mean, it's, 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 it is a huge topic. I've seen, I think I've seen the stats at work. It's it's immense. It's the amount of people that are on antidepressants that are suffering with mental health. It's yeah. Think, it's something as small as that. Whereas that people have you know depression or mental health issues. So I think people are realizing yeah. that we need to talk about it, and talking about mm -hmm. it is the way to help it. It's yeah, so yeah. I, I feel like you're or anything like that. that. Yeah. Sorry, I think my doorbell just went off. Um. <laughs> But mental health definitely, I feel like, has been a topic um, that's been floating around for a while. People, definitely since the pandemic, you know, mental health became even more of a, a topic to highlight. But specifically on how your emotional health is impacting, like, your actual health health, I feel like it's something that's fairly kind of coming into, into, uh, into like, mainstream, kind of. Maybe not yet mainstream. I have books on it. I've got like the emotion code. I've got so many books on the emotion, emotions and healing, change your thoughts, change your life. Mm -hmm. All this healing, I think that emotions is the root. I, that's me personally, because that's mm -hmm. a lot of things that I that was like if, if we're weighting it in terms of emotional, physical, and chemical stresses, I think mine would be the emotional health. That would be mm -hmm. where I'm most of it is weighted if we're doing percentages that'll be the biggest percentage for me I don't know if mm -hmm. you know this podcast to see out to see are other people feeling the same is this something that we need to focus on um but I think it is so healing because once you let go of that you have so much more space so you know how I had that um emotional detox recently because I've been having mm -hmm. sessions I'm telling you, yes, I felt, you said to me, I sounded so sad on a voice note. And for about three days, I was so exhausted. It exhausted mm -hmm. me. Um, and I just had to sleep it out and just do a lot of self-care. And I felt, after like, I think the fourth day, I forgot to tell you, I was going to send you a voice message. I had so much energy that I've never, that, that mm -hmm. used to have me when I was young, me before the illness. I had wow. so much pain. like where is this coming from and it's because like if you're emotionally hemorrhaging like that's a lot mm -hmm. of energy that's coming out of you and you can't afford that when you yeah. have an immune disease you can't mm -hmm. afford hemorrhaging that's the whole point of why you have it. so when you plug those holes not plug it like putting a sell it um a plaster on a wound because that's not really helping yeah. you're like sewing it up like a like let's say surgically you're cleaning like, it yeah, you're cleaning the wound. So, yeah, and then you, you've you healed that wound or it's healing and that, that bit is closed. That energy comes back to you. That's I feel like really powerful. Have, they have the hemorrhaging and they don't know where these hemorrhaging points are coming from. Yeah. So if, you, if yeah. you check in and figure it out and heal that way and close those wounds in, in a healthy way, believe mm. me, you will start feeling. I felt a shift in my system. You think mm. you've it out. You think that you've done, you've read the books and you've watched the podcast, you've watched the YouTube, whatever it is. But no, there is like just now we've been feeling triggers. It's just like this mm -hmm. years of layering things, right? Yeah. Years of it. Oh, yeah. So healing is not going to come overnight. To undo no. those is like shifting mountains. So mm. it's a constant thing. And I think it's so important to do it, but I feel the shifts and that's why it's so important to talk mm -hmm. about. Now you've mm -hmm. talked about like your peer, the peer issue, which you probably didn't realize was that much of an yeah. issue when you're thinking about it. So it's in there and it's swirling mm -hmm. around and it has to be released. So once you like it, see it, accept it, acknowledge it and see the patterns and then let it go, then it's mm -hmm. like the next thing surfaces, the next thing surfaces, but it's good. Yeah. It's, it's worth of suppressing it, right? So that's part yeah. of it's let it go, plug those holes and stop. Then you'll start feeling like you again. That's what I think. That's like a such a good way of just explaining it because I think that people don't realize how much it's draining them. Yeah. Like the emotional aspect. And I love that for that in your case, 
that you're pinpointing how the scale is for you, that the emotional stressors are higher in comparison, let's say, to the chemical and the physical. So that just means that you might have to do a little bit of physical and chemical uh, minimizing and a lot more emotional, you know, health work. And I think that you're just kind of shining this light into how the health journey really looks like. And it doesn't, I think a lot of people get, get fixated on the modalities of health. Like, okay, I have to eat right. And I have to do all these little things, but they're kind of, they're ignoring their innate, like, and needs. Um, needs. Yeah. And maybe those needs are not necessarily like just diet and just the non-toxic, but the emotional, like maybe that is where the skill is really off balance. And then yeah. the other, so once you start working there, then the other things can just fall into place. Like, you know, a few little yeah. changes here and there. Yeah. You know, something, it's not very easy to get um, therapy. I used to do it where I paid for it and I couldn't afford it anymore. So I'd stop, I'd start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. And that's not right. Then I finally went via the NHS, but I don't think it's what went out in, in the UK, the NHS. And I didn't think that they'd help me that much. But And I remember when I first started, it, she said, we got six sessions. And in my head, I thought, well, that's not really enough for me. So why am I even doing this? But anyway, fine. I'll do the six sessions. At least I'm not paying for it. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. After those six sessions, it was like, no, no, no. All right. You're going to need like an intensive 16 weeks worth of this. It was like, finally, that's what I need. Because this is like a lot of issues. If you ask me what's wrong, Meron, I'm, I might at first, like the first few sessions, I might not tell you like what's really wrong because I'm not used to expressing myself. But then that's why it needs a lot of sessions to dig deep. With somebody um, who doesn't talk about their needs and talk about their issues, I yeah. have a lot of things like it's an iceberg. Maybe just a few things that I'll say, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, all this thing happened that thing happened mm-hmm. but it's going to take a lot of sessions to get to the the mammoth iceberg at the bottom of all the real mm-hmm. issues. so I don't know because people might not feel to get that help because it's so expensive or there it's not if it's free it's not long enough it's I just don't think but that you know what available as much as it should be at the moment or it's it, too expensive you're, 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 it is. I think you're right. It is too expensive. And it can also feel discouraging, like you said, yeah. like only succession. But I also think that you, that was good that you used your resources anyways, because you were able to see how important it was when you did get the successions in. And it made it worth it for you to continue and seeking that type of um, putting your attention there. And I think what happens is a lot of people, you're going to spend your money, you're just going to spend it in other areas. And at least in the sense, you're understanding where it's going to, and it's going to a place where you actually need you know what I mean it's just like um I'm sorry like I'm distracted but I was like picking my cuticle while we were talking like you know how I was telling you I have knots in my stomach like I never pick I used to be a nail biter like really really bad and as we were talking I didn't realize that I was picking my cuticle and like literally and like making myself bleed and I had to get like a tissue with water to I stop. I didn't even notice. Yeah. Really? Is it? Is are the knots yeah. still there? It hasn't released yet. It, no, it's so, gone. It's, it's like settling. Yeah. Really sure. But the mm, that see it just shows. You see how you start to like act out on those um, mm-hmm. feelings. Those emotions. Yeah. yeah it's just like hard talk sometimes talking about it. You know, because it it's hard. like it's uncomfortable. It's You're like I'm like picking my cuticle it's good no yeah for me it's just like being just under a duvet and just not dwelling on it because we're talking about it in a healthy way and like having therapy it's in a healthy way so it's different than dwelling on it so mm-hmm. picking your cuticle yeah maybe like you healing but it just doesn't look like healing. yeah <laughs> it's, just, it's just kind of like um you're releasing something you suppressed it's the like the the he's suppressing my emotions you're like having to talk about like oh yeah like this is something that that was an issue for me you know and um even coping can during that time was like I would bite my nails a lot when I was a kid like me too. all the time but it's just yeah you know, it's just crazy that like but it's it's also must be it must be good for you to feel that it's not just you when you shared that I was like oh my god that's that was me that is me that's what I'm going through 
in my later years, not in my earlier years, but in my later years. Yeah. And I'm still struggling with it now in terms of peers and things like that. So it's not just um, you. There must be a lot of people out there that have that have struggled with that too. Yeah. We're all in it oh, together. Yeah. We're all in it together. And, and yeah. I have had like conversation with other women who have shared a little bit of like their Graves disease journey. And I always ask them, I said, well, where, where do you feel is, is like your main stress coming from? Mm-hmm. And um, some of this quest, some of the answers are very different, but I've have had people say um, it's like work stress or it's all there's people it's like people stress you know it's the emotional stress that people People can can add on you know and uh that's not like you're dealing with emotional stress that comes down to boundaries something that i've only learned a year ago i wish someone told me this i mean when i have a child god willing i have a child in the future i will teach them but this word boundaries i did not know about it how can i not i don't know if there's other people out there who are listening who have not implemented or really heard about the benefits of boundaries this is this is what will save you so i would focus on learning your boundaries because if you're people managing then you need to know your boundaries yeah yeah the crux of it really it's boundaries that's so true because i i feel like when you have a high tolerance yeah of um emotional what do you want to say emotional abuse or emotional i don't know how to like what's the right terminology mm-hmm. but you know like you can take on a lot because let's say you've been conditioned to yeah. that when you go and you face outside people um you can also become this dumping you know a dumping spot for individuals too and that's where boundaries are so important but it's hard to recognize where like when you're when you do have to put up boundaries it's hard to recognize like when you need to start because your tolerance can be too too high <laughs> like you can deal with a lot of people's junk just because you've been conditioned to but you're absolutely right you really need yeah. to start practicing putting up those boundaries way before you're like being buried in and um other people's emotional burdens or emotional oh, or not even know. burdens people just like talk things off and like talk you know and you just know what I mean? Just like, talking at you because this is a conversation, right? It's me and you. We're sharing things and it's different. But when someone talks at you, it's very draining. It's very draining. And I, I am, there was a day when I was on the phone for eight hours straight, one person after another, one person after another, one person oh. after another called me. I hadn't eaten. I hadn't drank. My oh. husband was fuming. He said never again. And it's lucky I had somebody that cared for me to see that and be like, that's not okay. But I'm like, no, but I need to help them. But they need this help and they need this advice and I need to be there for them. Oh, I didn't mean for it. Oh, but you know, that's you're just so used to yourself taking all of that. That's so I've that's like my baseline now where I'm just like, I'm never gonna do that again because it shocked my husband and he brings it up isn't that the- crazy that if it was just you that's just like a normal like that that's what i mean high tolerance yeah you just gave the perfect sp- example of that it's like wow no yeah. sense of guilt. Mm-hmm. what about my needs and, yeah not even to just have like basics like food and water that is yeah. a really like, or, or really to nice tell thing. someone hey i can't talk to you right yeah. now but I, i'm available in an hour or you feel whatever. bad because you're always there for yeah. people you, you feel bad to say such a thing you're there you just kind of like because you know i know what it's like to not have anybody to talk to when mm-hmm. i was younger and just mm-hmm. feeling so alone so i don't mm-hmm. I, I it's like i'm like is it called a broken sparrow where whenever somebody when there's like a broken sparrow you want to heal it you want to help it you want to look after it mm-hmm. and it's not healthy actually because Mm -hmm. you have to look after yourself first you can go and save people that's fine but first save yourself right you can't it's empty cup it's the um or like the thought that i'm thinking of when you're talking about the sparrow was um the injured bird yeah where you want to be going to that injured bird all the time and help fix them helps fix them but I, i don't think that necessarily a bad Thing, I feel like that's almost you putting out what you want for yourself. You know, a little bit of like someone to come and listen. You know, like you're like you said, you're providing something that, that get. maybe wasn't providing to you yet. You didn't yeah. get, so you fulfill that role in others. You know, but it's not coming back to you. To 
Sorry. Does that really come back to you? But it's also the scale is like way off. Like you, you describe like having no boundaries of saying, hey, like I've been on the phone. I, like I need to get off because I need to eat. I need to go, you know, take care of myself. It's just be, that that's when you're, I feel like that's the chronic, that's the chronic emotional stress that you just described. It's that. Yeah. It's the, at that level where you're literally ignoring all of your needs. You don't even see it. And you just feel like you have to keep going. And um, well, yeah. nobody checked in on you if your needs weren't met as a, as, a, as a child, then you never check in with yourself just to even see, are you hungry? Don't you need to sleep mm-hmm. now? You don't have mm-hmm. that mental conversation in your head because it wasn't, you don't even know what that even looks or feels like. Mm-hmm. So ultimately you're just hurting yourself even more. And I think this is what leads to my number five, my, well, it's my number one, but I'll just save it till number five. So what did I have? I had, no, my number, my actual number five is I have no control. Others are in charge of me. So that's one, that was one of my emotional profiles. So that leads to this, others are in charge of me. So it's until they get off the phone and, their deal, and they get on with their life. And I'm like, okay, then I can, I guess I can go and do my thing rather than say, no, I need to eat now. Others yeah. are in control of me. I have no control of self. Yeah. Um, but my, and I feel so my heart. Oh my god! Wow. This is yeah. the thing that I think is at the crux of every issue. And this is number. This is what I wrote as number one. Okay, I get emotional. But I think <laughs> my number one that I wrote was I'm not enough. Mm. So, if you don't feel that you're enough, then it. I feel like that comes at the crux of all of these issues. You don't feel that you're enough because then you'll never look after yourself. You'll never prioritize your needs. You'll never speak out. You'll never have any control over your life because you're not enough. You know, I feel, I feel, I don't know if others are out there who feel the same. I don't know if that resonates with you, but I feel like the underlying dialogue that's on repeat from childhood to now was this sense of I'm not enough. So, yeah it's a lot and I used, I had to write it I have it written on like my because my word my love language is words of affirmation right um I bought this book um that's called I am enough and I wrote it on my mirrors I wrote it every mirror in the house which looks like a crazy home if you come into the house <laughs> that's okay but I had to do wow. the thing to re- so I can see it in my reflection when I'm looking in the mirror I see it written I am enough when I'm looking in the mirror getting ready I am enough when I'm brushing my teeth I am enough because if you haven't had it said to you or you haven't felt it for for your whole life then you're starting you're starting from scratch again and you have to b- give yourself a new narrative that is helpful for you that your cells should listen to and is healing for you and that changed everything for me it changed a lot just to feel and I stopped those phone calls I now I say to I, I need to go now I need to eat um yeah I'm much better at it because I built that sense yeah. of self and that I'm enough to look after myself. It's such a mm-hmm. basic need. I am enough to look after myself. Mm-hmm. That's, I feel like um, hearing that, like hearing that being said out loud, like I am enough. It's almost like making me, again, like, um, I think because I suppress so much of my emotions, like even think like, you see, you're like, because you're doing all the work and doing all the therapy, you're getting to your root cause. And I'm literally finding myself right now thinking like, well, what is my root cause? Because I wrote the list, but what initially makes me, makes me, where's that rooted from the, you know, Mm. uh, having to suppress my emotions, not, you know, having to be too nice, not saying no, if you're speaking up, not wanting to be a burden, you know, like, um, I feel like, yeah, you're giving me a lot to think of, you know, when it, when it comes to sourcing, like the root causes of these emotional defense mechanisms, because yeah, yeah, it's not easy. No, I I feel like I see them. They what? It might hit you one of these days. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's what I kind of feel like. I'm just like, hmm. I'm quiet because, like, you're making me think <laughs> a lot. <laughs> heavy. It's so heavy. 
it's so heavy but it's better to be honest isn't it and be honest to yourself and you know also like emotional defenses are like I said in the first podcast they're they're healthy things to have but we're talking about chronic emotional defense mechanisms that are dysregulating you from like having healthy relationships or with people, you know, like not having um, healthy boundaries up, even having like being healthy. It's, it's disrupting and dysregulating all layers and, and areas of, of your life. So that's why I kind of feel that's why we both kind of need going into it. We're like, this is going to be a really heavy conversation. It's going to be very raw. You know, it's going to be this heavy. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oof. It's just real. It's just being so, so real. But the yeah. crazy thing is having to be so, so real to yourself. It's about you know, time. Like, you have to be. You have to be if you want to heal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Step one, be honest yeah. to yourself. That's it. Literally, step one of healing is be honest. It's time. Yeah. It's, it's not helping you. Otherwise, you're just going to keep going round and round in circles, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then you're know, like, even, it. what was that? And then you'll release it. it. As soon as you tap into yeah. it and you're honest, it's like, oh, got it. And then that one just finally, it's yeah. like you set it free. It's almost inside yeah. of you. Like, Please set me free. Please set me free. Mm-hmm. You have to check in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They go deep, tap it, and it's like mm-hmm. set me free. Now I can go, you know, release. Mm-hmm. It. I don't know. <laughs> no, you're making so much sense because I feel like just hearing you talk and and, and expressing like your pro- your process and like how you got there. The one word right now that is like popping in my head mm. about like the maybe the root cause is is not feeling important enough. Which like, is the same as not enough. The same thing, is it? Yeah. yeah. It's just like <laughs> it's so weird when you have to when you you're putting it into words, like what you're feeling into words, you know? It's like takes you a little bit of time to digest, but yeah, it is. It's not feeling enough, like not feeling important or like, you know, like why speak up? Your your opinion isn't important, you know. Um right. why say why say no? Because what you have to do isn't important. Exactly. Um, you're trying to be nice yeah. to everybody, you know, just to like exactly. not cause any disruption. You suppress your emotion because they're not important. And you don't want to burden other people because you're not too, you're not important enough to burden other people. Exactly. That's how- so it's heavy. It's <laughs> learning the tools now. You're like, I am <laughs> worth it. I am oh, worth it. it. I know. It's just like it makes you angry because you're yeah. just like that is so that is that is just I don't know. It's just such a basic thing that like, we should have had that we should have felt. Like yeah. mm, like if I I'm trying to figure out how to word it, but like if I've ever felt like my son, I was making him feel unimportant. Mm, mm, yeah, it's gonna mm. fall out. About not wanting to cry. Out. Yeah. Mm. How can you stay quiet? Mm-mm. Because mm. yeah, you see, <laughs> just like this innocent child, that's what we are. It's like our inner child is saying, "Why wasn't I enough? You didn't. It's not you. We didn't make ourselves enough because we didn't know that that was important because we didn't feel." we were important so it's like this inner child within us that is just is the one crying it's probably your inner child right now crying right um because that's where most things are rooted and it takes you (laughs) to see it at your something that you love beyond anything beyond yourself your child Mm -hmm. to be like to see that how detrimental that would be if you deprived him of any need i bet you wouldn't want to deprive him of any need everything he does is important even like playing with the stick that you share that on your Instagram, right? Every little thing he does is important because when you love someone, everything that they do matters, right? Yeah. yeah. I know. I know. <laughs> oh God. It's like I'm just trying to control it. <laughs> it's good. It's it, good for it to go out. This was me on Sunday. was it the Sunday when I <laughs> yeah. 
that was me on Sunday. It's like the lens of being a mom. Yeah. Yeah. Like all of these, these subject, like now that I'm a mother, they just, the weight is so, so different because I have a little person and I don't want him to feel like he can't speak up or that he's not important or he has to say yes to everybody or not feel like he's enough um, or that he's a burden. Mm. Like mm. it's just, it's just, um, mm. it just hits you differently because. Whew, yeah. It's, it's just like a God given, right? I mean, you, you, I could see it as like God looking down at us. He loves us as much as like you love your child. It's even more, mm-hmm. you can imagine mm-hmm. God's love. Um, and mm-hmm. he's probably thinking, why are you, you are enough. Like you, there's nothing you need to add or do just by being you. You are already yeah. enough. And yeah, that's why I, 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 I look to the Bible to get that. And that's what helps mm-hmm. throughout all the years. But it's that same love, yeah. that unconditional love, whether it's a mother and a child um, or your spiritual, you know, or god's god's love for you it's just like all in encapsulating right everything matters about you even the 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 number of hairs on your head matters yeah they're counted he knows every hair on your on the the number of hair strands in your head i can't remember (laughs) something like that um you're um, absolutely right it's just like you were saying something right now too that made me think like our children are not meant to fulfill us like to fulfill a role or to empty or to fill like any empty space we may feel they're not there to fulfill a role in our life. Like we, you, it's a labor of love. Your children don't owe you anything. They're not there to make you feel better. They are like these little creatures that Mm -hmm. are, barely developing growing understanding speech emotion uh, you know feelings like how other people react how the world reacts how there's gravity when you drop something and you pick it back they're like they're they're barely they're just got, they have so much already on their plate and then to add on like you need to fulfill a role in me you need to make me feel important you need to make me feel you know, needed or whatever, or give them a, it's just so destructive. It's just like, it's too yeah. much of a weight to put on a child. Um, yeah. Because they grow up and, and, and get an autoimmune disease, you know, because they, yes. and then that becomes an epidemic. So many people are with chronic illness and, and autoimmune, this isn't right. It wasn't like this how many years ago. Mm-hmm. What's going on? Yeah. Because, happening just, now. things are just becoming too much but stress is just not stress anymore it's chronic stress we're getting hit mm. from all sides mm. it's not just emotional it's physical it's chemical yeah i can't remember i remember reading somewhere like how many chemicals are used on a daily base that are pumped in the environment like it's in the thousands okay, okay? yeah and yeah. like the natural flow of life is just constantly being disrupted um the, I mean, the, the natural balance, but, um, even uh, it's just emotional. I think it's the one thing like, um, that you, you know, it's like your home, you know, you can, um, become more self-aware of like the impact that it's having in your house and the people around mm-hmm. you. Um, but yeah, I don't it's, know. Not with yourself. it's like that song, Michael Jackson song, stop me, look at the man in the mirror or Mahatma Gandhi <laughs> said, be the change you want to see in the world so just start with you Mm -hmm. start with what works for you and start filling yourself up with all those good things whatever it's you need those words of affirmation or putting yourself Mm -hmm. in environments that fill you up or sitting in nature like you or being in nature whatever is now adding to you instead of focusing your energy where you're hemorrhaging shift it you need to be in places that are nurturing and nourishing for you so it's good yeah. to be aware of your emotional stresses and then see where you can work. Yeah. With. yeah. That's it's been such like a good talk. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's just, it's been Yeah, we're gonna have to watch the Titanic now. <laughs> I'm gonna watch I know I already know what movie I'm gonna watch next. But 
sometimes you just need that help because if you're not used to crying and you're so used to taking things and tolerating things sometimes you mm-hmm. need like a little help that's why I watch sad movies because I just yeah it's actually healthy to cry but when you're yeah you know, unhealthy habits is like to not cry and to just take things on and tolerate 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 so I know that whatever it is or journal or whatever it is do it just work with your will really, that. That's yeah like that you say oh yeah it's just like you know I, I felt like having this conversation with you I was looking at it through just me me you know and then at the very very end it was like my son flashed in my head and instead of seeing me as that little girl I saw my son mm-hmm. and it was just like but i that's the self-importance you need to give yourself, you know, just that self-importance that you would give to others. You need to give yourself that same importance to, to um, validate your feelings, to validate your opinion, to speak up, to not to say yes to everything. Like it, it, you have to start validating yourself because guess what? My son is watching me and I can tell him with my words, but my actions would also show him. You know, and I don't want him to to see these these emotional defense mm-hmm. mechanisms that I've created. In because yeah. um, he know, will learn it. Become, he will learn it. Yeah. yeah, it's just making me become more aware. Also, like how how is it coming? How yeah. is it looking from his perspective? But yeah. man, I'm telling you, the healing journey is always going, <laughs> ongoing. If there's never like a destination you know but at least this is positive healing whereas if you're just carrying on doing things that hurt you then you're not you're not it's still painful but you're not helping yourself at all yeah you're healing you're, you're falling down but you're getting back up and you've learned something new and you yeah. fall down you get back up yeah. and you learn something new so it's on the yes. right as opposed yes. to yeah it's not easy and it's painful and it's hard and it's uncomfortable but at least mm-hmm. it's on the right track Whereas all the other things are also painful, hard, and uncomfortable, then that's steering you further down the wrong track. So mm-hmm. it's hard stepping into that space and connecting with yourself and being okay to cry for you. It's easier, it's so much easier for us to see it in people that we love, you know? So for yeah. you, for, for your son, but when you see it through you, for you, then you're going to connect to something. Because mm-hmm. You 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 have to love yourself just as much as you love your son. Love yourself okay. as well, right? And same for yeah. me. Like when I'm going to step into motherhood, God willing, in the future, these are good things to be aware of as well. Just like you step into that because you definitely need to fill your cup a lot more as a mother. Right? Like I think. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I that's why we were sharing that. Like we normally do a daily devotion or Bible reading or something because that to me fills me up like those bible verses just they pop up in my head in the right time you know throughout the day they just keep me grounded and and, um um and that helps me set my day yeah Yeah. that's my well that I go to and and I don't have to rely on you know because as a mom you're on a different clock you know you're on your baby's (laughs) clock and um and then you try to squeeze what you can around that you know but um So I'm not depending on just these habits anymore, but I have to depend on something else to help me to start the day, regardless of what I can do and what I don't do. That is the end of this week's Thyroid Sisters Navigate Graves Disease podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you found it useful and enjoyable. Please do follow and subscribe to our podcast that you are the first to hear about new episodes. And if you're enjoying them, please leave us a five-star rating as this will help us so much. The bigger the show gets, the bigger the awareness raised. You can find us on social media using the handle at lovingmekindly and also the handle at healing underscore unapologetically. Until next time.